Truth is always met with opposition. If it is not met with opposition in our modern world, then it's not the truth. The truth is hated, and this hatred will intensify with each passing day. Your modern churches, all your religions, academia, media, and all entertainment industries are corrupt. They serve the devil and his children, and they continually promote blatant lies as truth and truth as a lie. And if you do not know that you're in a war for your mind, body, and especially your spirit, then you've been sleeping or following the beast. Here is my email. If my channel ends up gone, simply email me if you believe that you have benefited from my work. Hello, brethren. It's Rob Lee. I'm going to play a video for you that can change your life. It's a, a lecture that I first came across five and a half years ago, and it started me on fasting. You must be willing to listen to the entire content, and then you must be willing to do the work. Fasting is more important than most people could ever understand. The truth about fasting, however, has been taken from us by the evil of this world. The fraudulent healthcare system, big pharma, and the food industries want us to eat, drink, and be sick. This gives them power over our lives. They harm our bodies, our spirits, and they take away our means. So I'm going to share with you a lecture that was important to me. It started me on my journey, and fasting has been a huge part of my life for the past five years. Sadly, however, during the past five years, there have been moments when I have gotten away from it. And I'll give you my word before Jesus Christ that I have felt the best when I have fasted and when I fast continually. So in the past few, few months, I am back to fasting and I am committed to it for the rest of my life because I know how important it is. I want to, I want to please my Father and I want to keep my temple as clean as possible. And that takes a lot of work. And this is where most folks... They're not willing to go the extra step because it's hard to fast the right way. Currently, there is a movement on the Internet called intermittent fasting. And what this is is short-term fasting. There are virtually no benefits from short-term fasting, hardly any. Now, the only good thing from it is that you will spend 18 to 24 hours and you will not ingest poisons, but there's no long-term benefits from it or even the short-term powerful benefits that you get from true fasting the way the Bible tells us. We eat and drink poisons daily, and we do it willingly. This is the, this is the physical sorcery. The, spi the spiritual sorcery is that we allow our eyes and our ears to be subjected to the sounds and the pictures of the enemies of Jesus Christ, and then we turn around and we profess how much that we love him. On a daily basis, we ingest so many poisons that I cannot mention them here, but I will. In the comment section, I will leave a just a bunch of names and companies that Pierre, Kate, and, uh, and that myself, the people that have compiled that you need to know about. Folks, it's so bad that I did two videos about demonic merchants that have been caught on video admitting that they put aborted fetuses in our food and our beverages. Our water is contaminated, polluted, and filled with fluoride. There was also Monsanto GMO foods. Now, I would be remiss in my duties if I did not mention also the quality of the air, and also plastics. Do you ever think about the amount of plastics that the earth consumes every single day? In the average minute, there are absolutely hundreds of tons of plastics being put back into the earth, into the air. Where do you think they go? They go into your water supply, they go into your food supply, they go into the air. This is the world that we are truly living in. I'm going to say just a few words about fluoride and the GMO foods that we get from Monsanto and other demonic merchants. Now fluoride, and in the future I hope to do some more videos about fluoride and Monsanto. Fluoride is more toxic than lead and on par with arsenic. Yet we are told to avoid lead and arsenic at all costs. However, the poison known as fluoride has been promoted by the devil's children to destroy us. Many countries no longer use fluoride in any products, toothpaste, this is where it started, that it would help us with our teeth, and especially in their water supply because they know that it's poison. Why do you think Western culture countries still use it, especially the United States? Our mouths absorb whatever we put into it. Our skin breathes and absorbs up to 70% of what it is exposed to daily. The absorbed product is sent straight to the liver to be processed. And fluoride is in everything in your house. It's in your water. It's in everything in your house now. And you have, to, you have to combat it. But there's only a few ways that we can actually do it. I would like to say a few words about Monsanto now. And then we'll get on to the lecture. 
Bayer acquired Monsanto last year for around $65 billion, and they recently suffered a blow when a French court determined that their weed killer Lasso had caused neurological issues in a farmer and he won a major lawsuit. A day later, the company agreed to comply with a court-ordered meditation with a plaintiff who claims that another of its products, Roundup, caused her Hodgkin lymphoma. In the midst of all this, the United States Secretary of Agriculture actually had the audacity to criticize Vietnam for banning the import of herbicides, containing that glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup, is safe. I want you to think about this. The United States Secretary of Ag Agriculture criticized a little country in Southeast Asia for not warning poisons in their country because of this one chemical, glyphosate. Glyphosate is the most widely used herbicide on this earth. More than 300 million pounds of it. 300 million pounds, folks, are used every, every year just on the United States farms alone. It strips the plants and soil of all of its nutrients, and in the past 40 years, tens of millions of acres have been saturated and destroyed by glyphosate and Roundup. Now, since it's an introduction in 1974, which is about the time that the food started to change, over 9 million tons, 9 million tons, and 2,000 pounds makes a ton. Do the math. 9 million tons of Roundup have been sprayed on fields worldwide. And think about what has been done here to the United States, to all the farms. Everything from endocrine disruption, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and of course cancer comes from, has a distinct tie to glyphosate. Studies have linked it to, kid to cancers, to kidney failures, to your immune system being destroyed, yet this is what is in the food, this is what, in the, this is what is in the water. So how do we com combat all this evil that is in our foods, water, and air? Most folks will throw up their hands and say, I can't do anything. But the truth is, is that, that, that we can, if we are actually willing to sacrifice and put in the work. First, we must I identify the evil. We must know what, what we are actually up against. Then we must be committed, committed, underline it, we must be committed to avoiding these foods and these liquids at all costs. Currently, there is a massive movement of what's called organic food. The same monsters who destroy our foods are behind the organic movement. Sadly, there was a time when food was good food. All food was pretty good for you because we were blessed. Now we have poison for the poor people and the good food for those who can afford it. However, I'm not sold on the organic movement at all. In fact, I don't think it's everything that it's being made out to be. We can combat these evils by prayer and fasting. Fasting will detoxify the body of these poisons and it will do much more than that. As always, the devil and his followers are one step ahead and they are promoting certain types of fast that do not actually help us. The way to receive the true benefit of fasting is to do it right and to be blessed by it. Then you may see the blessings of a true fast and the blessings of your creator. The following is the lecture that started me on my fasting journey, and I pray that it will motivate you to take the steps to learn about true fasting and what it really means and how it actually helps. At the end of the lecture, I will share just a short few more minutes of information with you. I urge you to get a pen and piece of paper take notes because it's that important. The guy who gave the presentation is an expert and he's not paid off and bought by the Babylonian system. In fact, he is an enemy of them. I hope you enjoy the lecture and I will see you at the very end of it. One of the reasons that so many of our people have never undertaken the adventure of fasting is because of fear due to a lack of understanding. It is the purpose of these presentations to give you clear understanding in several different areas. How to fast properly, how fasting removes non-functional matter from the body, what the source of this non-functional matter is, the effects of this non-functional matter on the body's internal processes, how diet can alter the rate of formation of this non-functional matter in the body, and to explain how you can easily control physical pain as well as undesirable mental and emotional states. Fasting can open the door to a permanent increase in your level of physical energy, mental clarity, emotional stability, and to an increase in your level of spiritual perception and understanding 
which cannot be adequately described to one who has not experienced it. Another reason that fasting is not more widely undertaken is that when a truth becomes vague, it ceases to have any practical application. This is what has happened with the biblical teaching on fasting. Short fasts normally accomplish very little because the body processes which are activated during the fasting state take time to build up momentum. The material in these presentations is based on over 20 years of research by a medical doctor who was run out of the so-called profession by Satan's children. If one is willing and able to listen to the voice of reason, to listen to facts with a dispassionate mind, the truth will speak for itself. We should listen to the words of Thomas Jefferson. Reason and experiment have been indulged, and error has fled before them. The Apostle Paul has told us that we should examine, try, prove, test all things until we can recognize what is good, and to that we should hold fast. If our Israelite men were truly men, they would listen to reason, but instead what we see for the most part as a sign of our decadence is the fulfillment of the words of Isaiah, children will be their tyrants and women will rule over them. A person may fast for any of many different reasons. It is not our purpose in these presentations to take up valuable radio time covering material which is readily available in the printed word. We strongly recommend your thoughtful consideration of the matter presented in two books, God's Chosen Fast by Arthur Wallace, W-A-L-L-I-S, and The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Arnold Errett, E-H-R-E-T, available at your local health food store. Suffice it to say that the handwriting is on the wall. The scriptures clearly show that fasting can bring protection from on high, especially if we do it as a nation, and that fasting can turn aside judgment in times of national emergency. In addition, knowing how to fast can be a very valuable asset in times of food shortages. Need more be said. Many scientists have been murdered in this century because the truths they discovered are a threat to the control plan of Satan and his children. You and I bear a direct responsibility in this matter, since if the truth were more widely desired, it would be more widely known. The problem simply is that most people do not really want the truth. What they want is the fulfillment of their petty personal desires. They do not want to be confused with the facts when their minds are already made up. It is not without reason that the scriptures state that he who increases knowledge increases sorrow, for with increased knowledge comes increased responsibility. One of the men who was murdered for his scientific findings in this century was a medical doctor who discovered the definitive cure for cancer back in the 1920s. Those who say that this cannot be merely show how naive they are as to what is going on in the world. People with this mentality are the unwitting enemies of truth because of their complicity with the enemy. The scriptures tell us at Matthew chapter 23 verse 15 that the genuine seed of the woman when under the spell of Satan and his children become twofold more the children of hell than Satan's own offspring. Back in the 1940s, there was an effort in the National Congress to implement on a national scale the above-mentioned cancer cure. That is documented historical matter, but Satan's children effectively brought that effort to a quick end. Those interested would do well to consider the implications of the facts presented in Appendix B of the book A Cancer Therapy, 50 Cases, by Max Gerson, medical doctor. For the discerning mind, scientific discoveries always have spiritual implications. You cannot possibly have any discernment and be a mass media programmed robot at the same time. Many, if not most of our people, have become brainwashed programmed robots of the mass media, which only serves to show you that you can lose your mind without knowing it. To have discernment, you have to be able to trust your own judgment. 
You cannot trust your own judgment unless you are in the habit of using your mind. This requires persistent, daily, self-discipline and personal effort, not a couch potato, boob tube watching mentality. It is because of intellectual laziness that we have been duped into accepting solutions which do not deal with the underlying root causes of our problems. If a solution to a problem does not remove the root cause of the problem, it merely compounds the problem and prolongs it, all appearances to the contrary notwithstanding. The embracing of false or specious solutions is precisely what the scriptures mean when speaking of the tender mercies of the wicked. It requires discernment to see things for what they really are, to see the truth buried amidst falsehood, to be free from any strong delusions, to be free from self-deceit. It requires vigilance and personal effort to separate fact from fancy, belief from knowledge, truth from falsehood. Satan and his children always mix everything together in order to produce confusion. When things are all mixed together, they have to be sorted out if we are to have understanding. It is the mentality of a simpleton to read a book, find something you agree with, and then accept everything between its covers, or to find something with which one disagrees and then to reject the whole contents. This is intellectual laziness, dishonesty, and stupidity. Such people are the mindless living damned. Over them, Satan is victorious, for the battle between the forces of light and the forces of darkness is a battle for men's minds. Without the virtue of discernment, one is irretrievably sucked into the quagmire of confusion which surrounds us on all sides, produced by the mass media under the control of Satan, his children, one scientific work with profound spiritual implications is a little-known book, Senescence and Rejuvenescence, by C.M. Child, University of Chicago Press, 1914. The title simply means Aging and Age Reversal. The contents of this book establishes the scientific basis of age reversal. Aging in any organism is a series of chemical reactions. The first principle one learns in general chemistry is known as Le Chatelier's principle, which is an established law of chemistry that states that all chemical reactions are reversible. A corollary of this law is that the aging process is reversible because the aging process, the process is nothing more than a series of chemical reactions. The thesis of C.M. Child's book is that periodic food deprivation rejuvenates a living organism. The cells in any living organism show characteristic changes as the organism ages. When an organism is periodically deprived of food, these changes which have taken place are reversed and the cells revert to a younger condition. Their appearance actually changes. In any living organism, it is form that determines function. If the form is altered, so is the function. These scientific facts explain why fasting is able to accomplish what it does. Periodic food deprivation enables an organism to eliminate unnecessary accumulated matter trapped within the organism. What happens is that when there is no food present to be digested, the energy that had been used for digestive processes is now rerouted to be used for the processes of elimination. All living organisms have this built-in mechanism of rejuvenation. When we speak of purifying the body, we mean that we are activating the processes of elimination and thereby ridding the body of its stores of accumulated non-functional matter. Fasting accomplishes what it does because it purifies the body. Purification is regeneration, and regeneration is rebirth. Actually, what is regenerated is the fire of life, which is being smothered by the non-functional matter within the system. Just as in the spiritual life there is no standing still, one is either ascending or descending, so likewise every living organism is either degenerating or regenerating. 
Degeneration is most concretely and accurately defined as that state of a living organism in which it accumulates non-functional matter more rapidly than it eliminates it. It is the progressive accumulation of non-functional matter within any, or within any organism which is the material cause of aging and degeneration. To age is to degenerate, to gradually suffocate the fire of life. Likewise, regeneration is that state of a living organism in which it eliminates non-functional matter more rapidly than it accumulates it. If on a daily basis we get rid of more non-functional matter from the body than we bring into the body, we have in effect reversed the aging process. If a person is increasing the internal contamination of the physical body, he is degenerating, smothering the fire of life. If a person is decreasing the internal contamination of the physical body, he is regenerating, fanning the fire of life. The aging process in the physical body is not something mystical, something beyond our understanding. It is due to the progressive accumulation of non-functional matter within the body, which finally knocks out some key organ and death follows. If a person trains himself to undergo repetitive fasts interspersed with a good diet between fasts, the activation of the body's age reversal mechanism soon becomes very apparent. It is all very simple and easy to understand unless you have been hopelessly brainwashed and have thus become a programmed robot of Satan's mass media and the spin doctors. Another way of stating that form determines function is that anatomy is the basis of physiology. Anatomy is the study of form, while physiology is the study of function. For example, it is the anatomical form of the alveoli, or air sacs in the lungs, which enables them to function as a gaseous exchange mechanism for the pickup of oxygen and the discharge of carbon dioxide. Another biological law states that physiology precedes psychology, which is to say that mentality is a reflection of an underlying chemical state which, although unseen, is operative in the background. A person's behavior is a reflection of their mentality, and a person's mentality is a result of their level of perception. In turn, a person's level of perception is greatly colored by the condition of his internal chemistry. Where there is a fundamental difference in behavior, there is a fundamental difference in the underlying mentality, a fundamental difference in the level of perception, and a fundamental difference in the underlying chemical background. Why do you think Satan's children add fluoride to the water supply? It is because of the effect it has on people's minds. Why do you think there is so much bad press and publicity about stimulants? What do stimulants stimulate? Stimulants stimulate eliminative processes, which means that stimulants are blood purifiers. It is difficult to control people when their blood is pure. While on the other hand, when the blood is not pure, people are more susceptible to demonic influences and more susceptible to being programmed. Why do you think it is that Israelite women are supposed to be isolated from the community during the time of their menstrual flow? It is because of the fact that at that time of the month the blood level of waste is at its highest and people with a high level of blood waste are more susceptible to demonic influences. Blood waste level has a direct relationship to one's level of emotional stability as well as one's susceptibility to demonic influences. You see, the bloodstream is the link between the inner unseen worlds of spirit and your mind. First they inject you with a vaccine and then using the frequency of the vaccine as a carrier wave, they broadcast the frequency and control people's minds. Or did you really think that the sudden push for immunizations is because the government is interested in your health? So, as we were saying, there is a chain of causality between one's chemistry and one's behavior. Different chemistry, different behavior. Fasting can change your level of perception. Elevate it. Can change the way you see things. And in some cases, literally make you see everything in a newfound light. It is something you have to experience to appreciate. It does this because it removes the non-functional matter from the body, which interferes with the body's underlying chemical processes and the body's electrical mechanisms, such as the brain. The general failure of our people to realize the intimate connection between the spiritual and material levels of our being 
is due in great part to the yet persistent influence of an early church heresy, the Manichaean heresy, which disregards the material world in favor of the world of spirit. According to Manichaean theology, the world of spirit is alien to and separated from the world of matter and cannot be linked to it, whereas the fact of the matter is that the two are inseparably connected. If spirit were not linked to this material dimension of our existence, we would not be duty-bound to take dominion over this material realm and transform it in the light of the spirit. Science itself has proven this to be the case inasmuch as man's mental and emotional states, based on his level of perception, take place on an underlying, only indir indirectly perceptible chemical background from which these states are inseparable. The brain is the mind's instrument. The level on which one's mind functions is conditioned by the level on which one's brain functions, which in turn is conditioned by the internal purity of the physical body. The non-functional matter in the body produces a demonstrable resistance to electrical flow in the body. Fasting removes this material basis of electrical resistance from the body. This increases the electrical level on which the brain functions. The reason that hypoglycemics are frequently very emotionally unstable is because of their chemistry and the effect this chemistry has on the brain. If you want to see the effect the non-functional matter in the body has on the flow of an electrical current, replace the water in your car battery with human sweat and see how bright your car lights shine. Consider the fact that at the Fasting Institute in Moscow, Russia, since the 1950s, all forms of mental disease have been treated successfully by a combination of fasting and a lacto-vegetarian diet. It has been shown that a certain percentage of people within a given group will go into complete remission after the first fast, provided they maintain the diet. Another percentage will go into complete remission on a subsequent fast. It is the amount of non-functional matter in the body which determines how many fasts a person will have to undertake before they experience complete remission for their particular form of mental disease. Several times we have used the term non-functional matter. This can also be called toxins, toxic waste, or simply the garbage which is trapped inside the body defiling your temple. If you think that your body is not full of garbage, you can quickly remove all doubt by performing the following simple experiment. Take a shower and gently abrade with one of those green scouring pads the entire surface of the body to remove the dead skin. Rinse well and then get into a steam box or steam room and using a sponge, collect the sweat out of the sponge into a quart bottle. When the bottle is full, you will not be able to see through it. The solution has initially no perceptible odor, but if you let it sit for several weeks, it develops the odor of a rotting cadaver. Now please tell me that that substance has no effect on your mind or your emotions. Whenever a person has an acute illness, a head cold, bronchitis, flu, venereal disease, chicken pox, and so on, the body is discharging or eliminating its internal garbage. It is usually in the form of mucus or pus, it is this internal garbage on which microorganisms feed. If you stop the garbage from coming out, which is to say if you block the elimination process with man-made pharmaceuticals such as decongestants or antihistamines, the garbage then stays inside the body. Chronic diseases such as cancer and arthritis are built on the foundation of the suppression of acute illnesses. When you see acute illnesses for what they are, you will see them as a blessing and will learn how to work with your body to help it eliminate the garbage. Antibiotics kill microorganisms, but they do nothing to remove the internal garbage on which these microorganisms feed so that they do not address the root cause of the problem and hence the diseases come back. Make no mistake about it. Whenever you block elimination processes, however unpleasant they may be, you defile your temple. Whatever you do that either keeps the garbage in your body or creates garbage in your body defiles your temple. 
And as Paul says at 1 Corinthians 3.17, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Someday, when some of our people start to smarten up, they will realize that their fitness as an instrument in the Father's hand is limited by the condition of their physical body. Someday they will realize the tremendous importance of physical purification. If your Father were to pour out the fullness of his Spirit on any of us in these times, we would be instantaneously turned to mere ash. Throughout the course of history, more Christians have been murdered and usually through a long and expensive process by doctors than by any other cause, and this is with malice and forethought. Many know that what doctors have to offer is not really in their best interest, and yet they go to them anyway because they are too damn lazy to look into the matter for themselves. The body's internal garbage or non-functional matter which it eliminates during an acute illness or during the fasting state, always comes out as some form of mucus. It is important that you understand how this mucus comes to be formed in the body. Its origin is in the diet. When complex carbohydrates called starches and complex proteins are not completely digested down to their simplest building blocks, simple sugars and amino acids, and the incompletely digested fragments are absorbed into the body. The body links these fragments together, and the result is the production of high molecular weight toxic mucus molecules. This is how the body stores its mass of non-functional matter. The cells inside the body can only use simple sugars and amino acids for their metabolic processes. The incompletely digested fragments are like the soot in a car engine when the gasoline is not completely burned. The fragments of incompletely digested carbohydrates and proteins cause fluid retention. The amount of fluid retained is directly proportional to the number of particles. The body couples together thousands upon thousands of these fragments into one large mucus molecule which minimizes fluid retention by effectively decreasing the number of particles within the body. It was in the last century by European researchers that the cause of weight loss failure was brought to light. They proved that overweight in almost all cases is not due to the accumulation of fat or adipose tissue within the body, but rather is due to fluid retention caused by the presence of non-functional matter in the form of toxic mucus molecules. They call this phenomenon toxic bloat. The bottom line is simply this. If you are to experience permanent, sustained weight loss, you must rid the body of the molecular waste which is responsible for fluid retention. These molecules are eliminated through the skin surface by sweating and through all the body's mucous membranes, in particular by the colon, as well as by the lining of the respiratory tract. Fasting and or sweating in a steam box eliminates these molecules more rapidly than any other method. When the colon is functioning properly, it is the main organ for eliminating these high molecular weight toxin molecules. The colon needs the bulk of a high residue diet in order to perform this function most effectively. A common cause of weight loss failure is a high protein diet. Such a diet causes the mucus fluid retaining molecules in the body to come out of solution and to be deposited throughout the body on cell surface membranes where they no longer exert their fluid retaining potential. Thus the fluid they were retaining while in solution is freed up to be eliminated by the body and one experiences weight loss. For reasons too complex to go into at this time, Sooner or later, these molecules, which came out of solution while on a high-protein diet, go back into solution and again cause fluid retention. And the person is right back where they started because the mo molecules responsible for fluid retention were never eliminated from the body. Now you understand why weight loss for most people is not successful. 
Whenever a truth is not generally known, it is because people in general do not want to know the truth. People usually do not want to know anything that will interfere with their present mode of living, especially if it interferes with their comfort level. When one is eating, there is a flow of materials from the intestines to the rest of the body. The intestines are acting as an organ of absorption. When one stops eating, the direction of flow is reversed and materials flow from all parts of the body via the bloodstream towards the intestines. The intestines are now acting as an organ of secretion. In the first case, the materials are the end products of digestion. In the second case, the materials are molecular waste, the mucus molecules resulting from incomplete digestion. When one is fasting, Waste material travels from all parts of the body via the bloodstream to the lining of the alimentary canal, from the mouth to the anus. As an indication of this, we see the coated tongue, which reflects what is taking place throughout the entire alimentary canal. The coated tongue shows that the lining of the alimentary canal is now acting as an organ of secretion. If the coating on the tongue is scraped off, it will continue to get recoated as long as that surface is in an active state of secretion. During the fasting state, the energy which is normally used for digestion is rerouted and made available for the processes of elimination. This elimination process has three different phases, all of which are going on simultaneously. First. Waste moves from the tissues to the bloodstream. Second, from the bloodstream, the waste moves to the body's drains. And third, waste then moves from the drains to the outside of the body. The most important drain during the fasting state is the lining of the colon. When the bloodstream, loaded with waste from the tissues, circulates through the tissues of the colon's inner wall, the molecular waste is filtered out into pockets called goblet cells. The entire collection of goblet cells in the lining of the colon's inner wall constitutes the colon toxin reservoir. These goblet cells can be either full or empty. When the reservoir space is completely filled or saturated with molecular waste extracted from the bloodstream, it can no longer filter out waste from the blood circulating through it. Since the tissue to bloodstream phase of elimination has a momentum to it, depending on one's metabolic rate. Once the reservoir is saturated, the level of waste in the bloodstream starts to increase because it has no place else to go. When the level or concentration of waste in the bloodstream reaches a certain point, symptoms start to appear. Physical symptoms at points of constitutional weaknesses or mental and emotional symptoms, such as depression or lethargy. The way to minimize the buildup of waste in the bloodstream is to keep the colon toxin reservoir emptied so that the waste from the tissues can go directly via the bloodstream to the empty reservoir without building up in the bloodstream. As long as the reservoir is kept emptied, there will be a pressure or flow gradient from the tissues to the reservoir along which the waste will flow. The rate at which the waste wells up into the bloodstream from the tissues determines the rate at which the reservoir will fill up. The rate is dependent on the body's driving force, or metabolic rate, which is related to the age of the organism, as will be discussed later. The younger the age, the more rapid is the metabolic rate. Since it is fundamentally the metabolic rate which determines the ease with which one can fast, it is usually easier for older people to fast. It is the rate at which the reservoir becomes saturated which determines how often it has to be emptied. Emptying the reservoir during the fasting state takes time and personal effort. This is where the work involved in fasting comes in. Because most people who fast do not understand the importance of keeping the reservoir emptied, they fail to do so, and consequently do not realize the benefits potentially available when one fasts properly. Thus, they are not motivated to repeat their efforts. 
The colon reservoir does not empty itself automatically. For the colon to empty its taxon reservoir, it needs a stimulus to make its muscular wall contract. It is the contracting of the muscular wall of the colon which effectively wrings out the saturated reservoir and thus forces it to dump its accumulated contents into the hollow of the colon. It is the spreading of this wave of contraction which forces the material once in the hollow of the colon to the outside of the body. It is all very simple and easy to understand. In the non-fasting state, the stimulus, which triggers a contraction of the muscular wall of the colon, is either solid food entering the stomach, triggering what is called the gastrocolic reflex, or the accumulation of a certain mass of fecal matter, which, as it accumulates, stretches the muscular wall of the colon, increasing the muscular tension in the wall. When the tension in the muscular wall reaches a certain point, a contraction is induced, which forces the contents of the colon, the outside of the body. During the fasting state, the colon contractions are induced by providing a temporary or transient form of bulk in the form of water, either in the form of enemas or colonic irrigation. When stimulated to contract in this fashion, the saturated toxin reservoir with its accumulated mass of mucus in the goblet cells dumps its contents into the hollow of the colon to be passed to the outside of the body. Thus the key to minimizing any symptoms during a fast is to keep the colon toxin reservoir empty, which prevents the waste from building up in the bloodstream to a point where symptoms are likely to appear. Since it is the blood level of waste which determines when symptoms appear or disappear, you now have an understanding as to what you can do, even when not in the fasting state, to control or turn off the symptoms associated with any disease state. The truth in any given matter is always simple. Men complicate things in order to make money off of other people's ignorance. Those who want the truth in any given matter will find it. If you have not found it, it is not because it is not there. It is because you really do not desire it. The only reason Satan's children can do what they are doing is because we are failing to do what we are duty bound to do. If one does not empty the reservoir during the fasting state, <clears throat> the molecular waste carried by the bloodstream simply relocates itself to other areas inside the body which are already diseased. This is because wherever there is disease in the body, the flow of blood is slower than what it should be. The flow of blood in diseased areas of the body is slowed down because of swelling and congestion caused by the presence of toxins. Wherever the blood flow is compromised, it tends to get more compromised. Toxins come out of solution in areas where the blood flow slows down. It is like silt being carried by a river. Where the current slows down, the silt settles to the bottom. The exact same phenomenon happens in the body. Likewise, if the current in a river speeds up, what fell to the bottom when the current slowed down will be picked back up and carried away. This same phenomenon can be activated in the human body. In fact, whole treatises have been written on this matter, giving us the scientific basis of age reversal. These treatises were written some 1,600 years ago and earlier by some of Abraham's descendants, his descendants by Keturah. Wherever there is disease in the body, there is poor circulation and consequently a degree of stagnation. As stagnation increases in a tissue, oxygen availability decreases. Only cancer cells can carry on their function in the absence of oxygen. If oxygen is not available, the cells adapt by becoming cancerous. When molecular waste, instead of being dumped to the outside of the body by emptying the colon toxin reservoir, is instead forced to relocate itself within the confines of the body, the internal condition of the body, instead of getting better, gets worse. If you do not empty the colon reservoir when you are fasting by taking enemas or doing colonic irrigation, you thereby defile your temple. 
there are no two ways about it. The sin for which the wages is death is everything you do which pollutes your body. Death is not a mystery. As the saying goes, we dig our graves with our mouth. One so-called authority on fasting who ran a fasting institute in Texas refused to use enemas or colonic irrigation on the people he fasted, and they were frequently so lethargic during the fast that they had to be kept at bed rest, and he himself died as a bedridden arthritic. If you are fasting properly, you can expect to have more energy than usual. Read what Arnold Arad has to say in his two main books. The man who died as a bedridden arthritic had a mistaken belief and suffered as a consequence of his ignorance. So you see, what matters is the facts. If your beliefs are not in accordance with the facts, the facts will stand and your beliefs will fall and you with them. It is important that one have a clear understanding of the difference between belief and knowledge. Don't play games with your mind. Carl Jung, the noted Swiss psychiatrist, once said that God, in his infinite mercy, spared the average man the burden of thinking. He should have added that none of us is spared the consequences of our ignorance. There was a time when enemas were the mainstay of medical practice. Indeed, the root meaning of the word physician comes from the Greek and means one who gives a physic, which is to say enemas. The use of enemas can make the symptoms of any disease process disappear, whether the symptoms are acute or chronic. Pain nerve fibers are spread throughout the entire body. When these nerves are triggered, one experiences pain. It is pressure on pain nerve endings which triggers an impulse to the brain which the mind interprets as pain. Pressure is caused by tissue swelling, swelling by fluid retention, and fluid retention by the presence of waste molecules in the tissue spaces in contact with pain nerve endings. One can lessen the amount of waste in the tissues by lowering the level of waste in the bloodstream flowing through the tissue. If the pressure or concentration of waste in the bloodstream is less than the pressure or concentration in the tissues, waste will flow from the tissues to the bloodstream due to the concentration difference. Waste particles flow from an area of greater concentration to an area of lesser concentration. Likewise, one can lower the blood level of waste by emptying the colon toxin reservoir. All parts of the body are interconnected by the bloodstream. If you lower the pressure in any one area, you lower the pressure throughout the entire system. Max Gerson, medical doctor who discovered the definitive cure for cancer, found that the excruciating pain seen in terminal cancer patients could be completely relieved by a specific type of enema. In that way, he did not have to use narcotics, which are always constipating. If you want to know more about it, you will find what he used, described in detail in his book, A Cancer Therapy, 50 Cases. The cases discussed in the book are those of people with end-stage, so-called incurable cancer. The truth will only set you free if it is relevant to the problem at hand and if it is personally applied. In addition, undesirable mental and emotional states can usually be quickly relieved by emptying the colon toxin reservoir with enemas. Remember what you were told about the fasting institute in Moscow, Russia. Which level of the brain is operational in an individual is directly related to the blood level of oxygen. Waste molecules in the blood decrease the ability of the hemoglobin in the red blood cells to carry oxygen. The more acidic the blood, the less oxygen it can carry, and all toxic waste molecules are acids. You will never know if what you are hearing is fact or fancy unless you make the knowledge your own by having the courage to try something new. You see, most of our people want everything handed to them in the form of pre-digested dogma regurgitated by their local ministers. They want to be fed like birds. The odds of your making it into the coming kingdom 
are much less than you could possibly imagine. Most of our people have the feeling that they are really good enough. That is presumption and complacency. Most of us are quite well satisfied with ourselves, not bad enough to be much troubled by our consciences. We have little sense of sin because we have little knowledge of the laws by which we are bound. It is not without reason that Paul said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. What he was saying is that our salvation is not a sure thing, not by any means. The smarter one is, the sooner he wakes up to what is and what is not of consequence in life. The sooner we wake up, the less we suffer in both the long and the short run. It is a great tragedy that most never learn from their pain, and the cause of this is pride which blinds us. There is not a whole lot that we have to know in order to do what needs to be done. We do not have to be forever learning and never coming to a knowledge of the truth. If our minds labor under many strong delusions, it is only because we choose to do so. Contrary to popular opinion, fasting is not primarily a matter of willpower, especially if your body chemistry is balanced. The easiest way to balance the body chemistry and make fasting easy is to eliminate all putrefactive foods for three months before starting to fast. This means eliminating all animal products and getting on a diet of properly cooked grains and baked root vegetables which will alkalinize the system and neutralize much of the body's internal waste even prior to commencing a fast. The best information in print to date on how to break, prepare for a fast, what to do on the fast, and how to properly break the fast is to be found in two priceless gems by Professor Arnold Errett. It will be well worth your time to reflect thoughtfully on the contents of these two books, The Mucusless Diet Healing System and the second book, Rational Fasting. Your local health food store can get them for you. Errett does not, as is the case with most authors on fasting, give enough emphasis to enemas. It is most important to take enemas or colonic irrigation daily when fasting until the water comes out clear. When the water becomes clear, the toxin reservoir is empty. In addition, when taking enemas, the body will absorb much of the water it needs to carry the waste from the tissues to the blood. Most people have a very large amount of rock-hard fecal matter impacted in the colon. As the days of the fast go by, this rock-hard matter softens up and starts to break loose. When it passes, it is either dark gray or black, and it is not uncommon that one will feel sick to his stomach when this old matter starts to break loose. There are two types of non-functional matter or toxic waste in the body, waste which is free to enter the general circulation called free toxins and waste which is not free to enter the general circulation called fixed toxins. These are waste molecules which are tied down to cell membrane surfaces throughout the body. Fasting only removes that fraction. Fasting only removes that portion of the body's internal waste which is able to enter the bloodstream, which portion is called free toxins. If the fixed toxins, those which are tied down to cell membrane surfaces throughout the body, are to be removed from the body, they must first be converted to free toxins so that they can enter the circulation, and then they can be removed on a subsequent fast. A completed fast is one during which all the free toxins are eliminated from the body. This is indicated by complete clearing of the tongue. During a fast, the coating on the tongue will start to disappear. The clearing starts from the sides and the front of the tongue and progresses to the center and the back of the tongue. Often, even if the faster is doing enough enemas or colonic irrigation, the fast will not go to completion and hunger will return before the tongue has completely cleared. Frequently, the tongue will clear completely on a later fast. If hunger only returns when the tongue has cleared completely, then one has experienced a completed fast. Contrary to the opinion of many so-called authorities on fasting, the fast should not be broken gradually when hunger returns. The purpose of breaking the fast is to provide a large amount of bulk to sweep the intestinal tract clear of any residual matter that has accumulated during the course of the fast. Large amounts of steamed, non-starchy vegetables, such as cabbage, act most rapidly and efficiently. 
If one does not experience a spontaneous bowel movement within two to three hours after the first meal, help things along by taking enemas until you experience a bowel movement. Eat to satisfy your hunger as often as necessary. Stay on steamed vegetables for at least the first week after breaking the fast, cabbage, spinach, carrots, broccoli, and cauliflower, and then move on to more concentrated foods, properly cooked grains and baked root vegetables. A few words about colonic irrigation. This is a technique which has been around for a long time. The medical profession is most definitely against it because it removes the root cause of disease from the body, the substance which causes aging and on which microorganisms feed, and this steals their business. Chiropractors on the West Coast have been using this technique for some time, and they have found that if they use colonic irrigation in conjunction with their adjustments, that people do not need to be adjusted as frequently. It is the expanded state of the body's tissues caused by fluid retention, which makes frequent adjustments necessary. Colonic irrigation removes the toxic waste, which is the cause of fluid retention, and thus makes the adjustments hold longer. Even a grammar school student can learn how to do colonic irrigation. Cost of materials to build a machine, which will last a lifetime, is under $150. This includes hot and cold water control and a built-in temperature registering device, so you always know the temperature of the water entering the body. Every time you use the machine, you save between $40 and $50, so the machine quickly pays for itself. Anyone who is seriously interested in taking charge of his or her own health care will want to learn how to benefit from this technique. Knowledgeable chiropractors treat pediatric acute illnesses with colonic irrigation. Head colds, chest colds, mumps, scarlet fever, viral exanthems such as measles and chickenpox, and the results are always the same. Shortening of the disease process with enormous amounts of mucus or pus exiting the outflowing water. And no need for the use of Satan's pharmaceuticals. You can learn to take care of your own health problems if you really want to. The best medical insurance you can possibly have is a knowledge of causes. Dick Clark, who has been on television since the mid-50s, is nearly 70, if not older. The secret of his youthful appearance? He has been doing colonic irrigation since that time. More and more people are having these units installed in their homes and are learning to take care of their own health problems. Disease, aging, and death are all due to one underlying process, the progressive accumulation of non-functional matter in the body. The rate at which this material accumulates within the body can be markedly reduced by the way foods are cooked. If you prepare foods in such a fashion that it is easier for the body to digest them completely, the volume of food you need to eat to satisfy your hunger will be lessened, and in addition, the percentage of what you eat that will not get completely digested will also be significantly lowered, which means that the body will have less non-functional matter to deal with. If you toast grains prior to boiling them in water to allow for their expansion, the complex carbohydrates or starches will be broken down into smaller fragments and into simple sugars even before they are exposed to the stomach for digestion. You can see this for yourself in your kitchen. Cook a cup of rice in the conventional fashion without toasting it. When it is finished cooking, you will notice that the individual grains of rice have expanded to a certain extent and that they have a great tendency to stick to each other. Sometimes the whole pot will come out in one large lump because of the stickiness. This stickiness is due to starch molecules which have not been broken down. If you take a cup of rice which has been toasted prior to adding water and cooking it to allow it to expand, you will notice after all the water has been absorbed that there is no tendency for the individual grains to stick together and that their degree of expansion is significantly greater than that of the untoasted rice. This is because a higher percentage of the starch molecules have already been broken down by the toasting process. In addition, the rice is much more flavorful. Take another example to demonstrate the same thing. Take two russet potatoes, put one into a pot of boiling water and the other into an oven at 400 degrees. Cook each of them until a fork can be inserted easily into the center of the potato. Remove and cut each in half lengthwise. If you look at the knife blade after cutting the boiled potato in half, you will see and feel a stickiness due to the presence of starch molecules which were not broken down in the cooking process. You will not see or feel any stickiness after cutting the baked potato in half because much of the starch has already been converted into smaller molecules and simple sugars. The reason that the taste value of the baked potato is higher than the taste value of the boiled potato is because of the large amount of simple sugars present in the baked potato which are not present in the boiled potato.
the internal temperature of the boiled potato never got higher than 212 degrees Fahrenheit of the boiling water. At that temperature, very few starch molecules are converted into simple sugars. When a potato is baked at 400 degrees, much of its internal water is dissipated as it bakes, and this allows the internal temperature to rise significantly higher than the 212 degrees of the boiled potato. At this higher internal temperature, a higher percentage of the starch is broken down than was broken down in the potato, whose internal temperature never got higher than 212 degrees. If the potatoes were of equal weight before cooking, the baked potato would be lighter after cooking, indicating loss of its internal water. Over a long time period, this difference in cooking methods has a significant effect on what is taking place in the body. So a simple change in the way you prepare your foods can, over a long period of time, have a profound effect on your physical constitution. The way we cook our foods determines how easily our body can digest them. What forms a toxin in your body is what you do not digest properly. Grains which can be toasted are rice, rolled oats, rolled wheat, rolled barley, steel-cut oats, cracked wheat, millet, and buckwheat groats. Legumes, on the other hand, such as peas, all types of beans, and lentils, can be soaked for 12 hours, thoroughly rinsed in a colander, and then re-rinsed at least five times daily until they just start to sprout. Sprouting these foods is the most effective way of pre-digesting the complex proteins and starches of which they are composed. Then you can cook them as usual, and you will have found the trick to gasless beans. Sprouting does for legumes what toasting does for grains. It is the same with breads. Untoasted bread is much more mucus forming in the body than is toasted bread. Likewise, toasted bread is much sweeter than is untoasted bread. When one is not fasting, the process of body purification is most effectively continued by the daily use of a steam box. Your tolerance to the steam will increase as the days go on and the sweat gland system opens up. You simply make a wooden box large enough that you can sit inside it comfortably, line the inside with Silotex, and cover all joints with foil tape. Make a door in one side large enough for you to enter the box and make another small door in the top so you can vent the steam when it gets too hot. Make a small low stool to sit on and power the unit with a four to six quart electric deep fryer. It will generate more steam than you can tolerate. You can have a switch sealed in a plastic bag inside the box to turn the heater on and off. After you have inserted the electrical plug into the side of the deep fryer, seal that whole area off with a good grade of silicon caulk. This will prevent any moisture from reaching the electrodes and thus prevent corrosion, which will make the deep fryer last much longer and will also minimize the possibility for any electrical shock. You have heard it said that we only use some 20% of our brain capacity. What prevents the other 80% of the brain from being activated is the non-functional matter in the body. When this non-functional matter, both fixed and free toxins, has been removed, the body's built-in step-up transformer is activated automatically and the other 80% of the brain becomes activated. This step-up transformer is located near the base of the spine, which is called the sacrum. Sacrum is a Latin word meaning the sacred place. Even the Roman physicians knew more about the human body than our 20th century physicians, and it was not without reason that they named the base of the spine, where the bones are fused together, the sacrum, the sacred place. We hope that with the knowledge and understanding made available to you in these presentations, that you will have the courage to embark on the great adventure of fasting. We thank you for listening. All right, folks, so after watching that, and I hope that most of you came through and you listened to all 54 minutes of it, a lot of it may be all over your head, but it shouldn't be. What the man is basically telling you is that you have to get up off of your rumps and be willing to put in the work. Our people have become so lazy, they just don't want to take the time to learn. They don't. Most folks are too lazy to even pray. They care nothing about anything but being entertained. And I have said this for over and over and over. Folks want to be entertained. That's what they care about. We are being broken and we are being beat up physically, mentally, and spiritually. And you have a creator that loves you. If you would put your hand in his hand and if you're willing to do the right thing. The Almighty Father wakes you up, he puts you to bed. He feeds you, he clothes you, and he protects you and he gives you breath. He is your fortress of hope when the world seems as if it is turning on you and indeed the entire world is turning on us and trying to destroy us. I want to read some verses to you and I just want to say this to you. If we submit to this 
anti-Jesus Christ, atheistic, Babylonian, tyrannical monstrosity. Our Father will curse us. We will stand before Jesus Christ and we will have to give an accounting of why we gave in to them. Why we were not willing to go the extra mile for Jesus Christ. The Babylonian media and all alternative media outlets will censor any truth or attempt that may bring light upon how true, truly evil they are and what they are doing to us. And they will label the true followers of Jesus Christ as bigots, hate mongers, and terrorists when we are not. The sputum of scorn, misrepresentation, and abuse should not surprise the follower of Jesus Christ. The same treatment was meted out to your King and your Redeemer Jesus. The same treatment. I want to read some verses to you. I want to start with Revelation 9, 21 and Revelation 18, 23. These are the great merchants. Now, pay attention to the words of Jesus Christ. 9, 21 says, Neither rem repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries. Now, the word sorcery here comes from the Greek word pharmakia. This is where we get the word pharmacy, as in potions and pills. There's two different types of sorcery. There is a physical sorcery and there is a spiritual sorcery. For example, your physical sorcery is through your potions, your pills, your dope, your liquor, the pills, the things that we ingest, the food. Spiritual sorcery is through music, television, books, things that are, that are anti-Jesus Christ and people eat them up. Neither repented they of their mur murderers, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts, because they have stolen everything from you. Revelation 18.23, And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants, and they are the great merchants, were great, not great because they're good, great because they have this power that they have been given by the devil. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Matthew chapter 4, Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and was hungered. When Jesus went in, in, into battle, what did Jesus do? He fasted. The King of Kings, the most important being in your life is Jesus. What did he do? He fasted. Do you think that's the first time that Jesus Christ practiced fasting? No, it's not. Fasting was a part of the Israelite life. Let's read some more verses, shall we? Just about fasting, I, I want you to understand how important it truly is. In Matthew chapter 17, the disciples are casting out devils from people. They come to one and they cannot cast them out. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it? This kind goeth out, but by prayer and fasting. This is the spiritual warfare that you are in that so many folks just seem to forget. Most folks aren't even aware of Ephesians 6, the spiritual war that we are in. And what does the king of kings, what does he have to say? This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting to clean out your temple. Your connection to your father is more pure when you, are, when you have a clean temple. It means something. Let's read some more verses, shall we, about fasting. Psalm thirty-five, thirteen. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into my own bosom. Ezra chapter 8, 21 through 23. Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before our God. Notice it says that we might, at the fast, to afflict ourselves. It means to suffer, to go without, because it, it takes some willpower to go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve days with no food, just, just some water. But the benefits are immense. In 22, he says, For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is, is upon all them that for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he entreated of us, the man saying that they had given it all to the Father. And the Father saw this, that they fasted, they were willing to sacrifice, they prayed. 
and the father entreated them. It means that he gave to them. He heard them. Psalm 69.10, when I wept and chastened my soul with fasting. Notice he said he chastened his soul with what? With fasting that, that was to my reproach. Daniel 9.3, and I set my face unto the Lord God to seek prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Joel 2.12, therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and mourning. How far do you want to go, brethren? How far do you really want to go? You should pray over everything that goes into your body. Every time that you something goes into your mouth, you should pray before it goes into your body for your father, for your father to rid it of the nasty, nasty poisons that are in it. Do you believe he can do it? Of course he can. Jesus Christ does save. However, Jesus Christ gave his life for us and he went the extra mile for us. How many of you are going to be willing to go the extra mile for him? And when you stand before him, what will your answer be that you couldn't turn down some music? You couldn't turn down some dope, some alcohol, that you couldn't turn down some food. What will your answer be that you could not go the extra mile for? Is it really that hard? May the Father bless each and every one of you in the only name that saves, the only one that you need is Jesus the Christ. Amen.